it's time. We are on the ride. You've been cleared for takeoff. It's time to ascend to new heights. The number 10, Luke chapter 10, as you're turning, we want to first and foremost give glory and honor to God uh, for allowing us to prostrate ourselves once again uh, in his presence, realizing that last night could have been very well our last night. But because of the God we serve, he's privileged us to even lose an hour of sleep. Bless the mighty name of Jesus and still be on time today. I want to first, uh, also secondly rather, uh, thank my good friend, Dr. Marcus Barnum, the angel of this house, uh, for extending the opportunity to uh, profess my faith in Christ and him crucified. Over the past about five years now, six years, uh, we have been uh, good friends and uh, colleagues, and uh, he is uh, a man of many talents and much wisdom, even uh, at our middle age. Amen. Uh, and so we just thank God for him and his ability and continue to serve with him and continue to hold his arms up because sometimes the mantle gets heavy. Amen. And I want to bring you greetings from the New Heights Church located in Biloxi, Mississippi, uh, where we believe you can come as you are, but leave better than you came. Amen. Amen. Uh, We're not going to stand before you too long on this morning. I do want to give you a word from the Lord. Uh, We are in the middle of a series that we started on last Lord's Day, and so we're welcoming in New Heights. They are strict. They're going to pick up the feed here. Uh, And so I'm preaching to you back home, and I'm preaching to you in the building. Is that all right? Uh, And so we're going to continue our series, uh, chapter two of our sermon series for the month of March entitled Scars. Uh, Entitled Scars. And so uh, you looked in the mirror this morning, and I I probably could pre-adventure to say uh, that some of us rubbed a little cream or uh, some type of, amen, say amen or say ouch. Uh, We probably rubbed a little something uh, on our skin uh, because you didn't just wake up like that. Uh, Regardless of what Beyonce said, you didn't wake up like that. Praise Jesus. Uh, Amen. And so many of us have, have scars. Uh, along the way. Luke chapter number 10, be standing for the reading of the word. We're going to uh, launch this morning from verse number 30. We'll divorce the text at verse 35. Luke chapter number 10, verse 30 through 35. The Bible says these words. Jesus replied and said, a man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. And he encountered robbers and they stripped him and beat him and went away, leaving him half dead. And by coincidence, somebody say coincidence, a priest was going down on that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite also Coincidentally, when he came to the place and saw him passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan who was on a journey, somebody say journey, came upon him. And when he saw him, he felt compassion and came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own animal. Somebody say own and brought him to an end and took care of him. On the next day, last verse, he took out two denarii and gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him and whatever more you spend when I will turn, 
When I return, when I return, I will repay you. Last verse emphatically and for emphasis. On the next day, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper and said, take care of him. And whatever you more, whatever more you spend, when I return, I will repay you. If that's in your Bible, say amen. amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We call on you this hour as helpless yet hopeful as we know how. Thank you, God, for another day's journey, and we're glad about it. Thank you for giving us this day our daily bread. Now, Father, we pause to pray for this servant. I ask you now, God, to have your way in this place. Decrease me now so that you may increase. Use me as an instrument. Play me to the beat of your tune that I may speak forth your word without adding to or taking from that which is written in Holy Scripture. Quicken us now in your word, O God, that we may be able to leave out of this place better than when we entered in. For we realize you love us too much to hurt us, and you're too wise. You will never do us wrong. Go with us now. Be our friend. Be our comforter. Be our guide. But most of all, be our God. For you are the creator, the giver, and the sustainer of life. And for that, we ever praise you now. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Let my father's children say amen. amen. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor. Amen. Oh, y'all don't like those neighbors. Don't, don't, you know, don't, 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 don't come in here with all that. Turn to, the, turn to somebody else and say, neighbor, amen. you were my first choice. But God is covering you. Now turn to the one you didn't want to talk to and say, neighbor. I, 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 really, I really didn't want to talk to that person, but I'm going to tell you that God is covering you. Amen. Bless them by the name of Jesus. Amen. Last week, we talked about Apostle Paul coming from 2 Corinthians chapter 11, talking about how he had been whipped and beaten and shipwrecked three times times. We talked about, we often talk about the scars that Jesus has and how Jesus was, uh, was whipped and beaten and all of the things that happened to Jesus as he was scourged on his way to the cross. And we began to talk about Paul and how Paul is, is an apostle of Jesus Christ who wanted to really be intimate knowing the suffering of the Messiah. And so we talked about how Paul said he had been beaten five times with rods and, 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 and five times he had been given uh, 39 lashes. And so as we calculated uh, the trauma that Paul had endured, uh, we realized that Paul had been beaten over 195 times, meaning that could you, can you imagine the, the scars that was on the apostle Paul's body? And sometimes we limit the scars to thinking about Jesus and him crucified, but as a servant of the, of the, of the most high God, as a, as a servant of Jesus Christ, we realize that in this life, we are also going to induce some pain, some suffering, some persecution, and we're going to accumulate some scarring. We talked a little bit on last Lord's Day. I'm just catching you up in the series. We talked a little bit last Lord's Day about how scars can happen in many facets. Some happen physically, some happen emotionally, some happen uh, 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 spiritually. But even though we have scars, the scars represent something that we have gotten through. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I want to tell you, beloved, that, that trauma is bound to happen. No one is immune to trauma. It's not something that we can prevent. Life, beloved, is traumatic itself. We came into this world crying because of the trauma of childbirth. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. And, 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 and if we came into the world crying, then somewhere throughout our journey, we are going to have to shed a few tears. And, and I, I know that, 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 tra that trauma is, uh, is, is for everybody because uh, the Bible tells us, Job said that man born of a few days, uh, is, 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 is man that is born of a woman is of a, a few days and full of trouble. I know that I'm going to have some scars. One study found that among the population of most people, 80% of participants had experienced a traumatic event in their life. Yeah. If we polled the room this morning, 
We could probably say that that number is rather accurate because uh, some of us are, have either just come out of a storm, we're headed for a storm, or we're currently in the midst of our storms. We're taking uh, bumps and bruises along the way. But beloved, I want to encourage you, and what we've been encouraging New Heights through this, this series is how to live with your scars because your scars is not your, your, your testament. Your scars is a testimony. Did you hear what I just said? Your scars is not a testament. It is a testimony that God brought me through. It wasn't the thing that killed me. It was the thing that God delivered me from. And so in our text, I want to use these five verses this morning, beloved, to deposit chapter number two. We, we call our series is in chapters, chapter number two of the scar series, I'm scarred for life. Can you tap somebody and say, I'm scarred? I'm scarred. No, they didn't hear you. Tap somebody else and say, I'm scarred, I'm scarred. for life. The Bible tells us here that Jesus, as, as he has, has, of course, been, been doing what Jesus does, the Bible tells us in the beginning of this chapter that he had now commissioned uh, these, these 70 apostles to go out, and he commissioned them two by two, sending them out to, to, uh, to witness and to be uh, the people of God, how we're called to go out, how we're called to live a sent life, how we're called to, to, to make disciples, become disciples who make disciples. Disciples, Jesus was sending, sending the people out to go bring people in. And I need some of us to begin to understand that we weren't called to come in and to stay in. We were called to come in to go back out to where we came from. So, so, so Jesus is commissioning his disciples to the 72 he sent out to go bring others in and uh, the Bible tells us that they had began to ask the master some questions. As they came back in, they had began to wonder some things about the kingdom and how the Holy Spirit, or how the, excuse me, how the kingdom really thrives and how the kingdom works and how we should be as disciples. When you look back up to uh, verse number 23, it says, turning to the disciples, he said, privately, blessed are the eyes that see the things you see. For I tell you that many prophets and kings wanted to see the things that you see and did not see them and to hear the things that you hear and did not hear them. And behold, a lawyer stood up and put Jesus to the test saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? And he said to him, what is written in the law? How does it read to you? And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. But I dropped by the woodlands this morning. I dropped by Tamina this morning to ask you a sincere question. How can I love my neighbor when the neighbor is the one who calls the scarring to occur in the first place? How can I? Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. Um, how, 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 how? How can how can I, 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 I real how can I I put myself in a position to where I'm even believing God? Come on, come on, deal with yeah. When I keep getting knocked back down, but God, you see it. But we're so quick to tell God what He said. And not remember what God actually said. Because I remember somewhere else in the, in the text that he says, I will never leave you, nor will I forsake you. And beloved, I want to tell you, even though we may be scarred for life, that means we've been branded by grace. Uh, we, we, we've, been, we've been branded by grace, meaning when uh, cattle owners want to mark their property. When people pledge a Greek life, oftentimes they, they want to put a mark of identification somewhere on their person. It's called a brand. And I know in the book of Galatians, Paul talks about being marked for Christ, being marked as a servant of Jesus Christ. Beloved, who am I to say that I want to follow him and never endure any pain or affliction? See, we, we, want, we, want, we want the praise, but we don't want the pain. 
Say amen and say ouch. Uh, we, 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 want, we want to be blessed, but we don't want the burden. We want to be saved, but we don't want to save nobody else. And so Jesus said, verse, I'm in the text, verse 30. Yeah, yeah. Jesus replied and said, a man was going down. Somebody say a man yeah. was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. I wish I had time to deal with that journey from Jerusalem to Jericho. When you really look at the, the geographical context, you know uh, that this man was going a, a way that most people wouldn't really travel. It was, it was a way that, that was uh, unencouraging and uninviting to travel. There was, there was going to be some, some steep bends and some steep curves uh, along this journey from uh, Jerusalem to Jericho. And, and the beautiful thing about the imagery of the text and the periphery of the text, we realize that the, the, the language here, LaRonda, is intentional because he says a man was going down. I need somebody, about two or three of y'all in the room on, on this morning to know that in order for me to come up, I first got to travel down sometimes. He, he was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho, meaning that my journey is not going to always be uphill. But while I'm going down, I'm going to begin to endure some affliction, some pain, some suffering, some betrayal. I'm going to endure some people turning their back on me, ignoring me, act like they don't see me. I am still blessed. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho and he encountered robbers and they stripped him and beat him. Now, if that's already not enough, can you at least get me some help? You stole all my money. You, 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 you done marked my body up. Can you at least call for somebody to come get me? Love it. People who don't mean you well never cares about your recovery. Okay, I'm in, I'm in the wrong church. Uh, 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 people, people who inflict pain never think far enough ahead to think about the residual of the pain that happened in the moment. And some people want forgiveness because of what they did years ago, but they're still hurting other people. But I'm thankful that my scars are representation that I've been covered. Y'all don't know when to shout. Um, uh, my, my, my scars is an indication that no weapon, y'all ain't gonna pray with me, formed against me shall be able to prosper. What you meant for evil, God meant it for good. And, and what you thought was going to dismember me and to scar me and to mark me up ain't nothing but beauty scars, baby. I came to tell you that his grace has brought me through. He says that coincidentally, somebody say him wrote. And when he saw him, he did like a lot of us do. He passed by. The church people that punched their card and went to meeting. Yeah, y'all know y'all know that language, right? That he he laughing because he he from, he from Mississippi. He know what I'm talking about. You, you go to meeting and you don't go to church. I mean, you go to meeting in Mississippi. Uh, 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 you 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 went to the church house. You signed your name on the roll. Uh -huh. But as soon as I left yeah. out of the building, uh -huh. I forgot who I belonged to. Uh, and we're still doing this in 2024. Uh -huh. we're, we're still playing church. There's been much controversy this week about 
uh, the comment that Ty Trebit made on, on, on the Breakfast Club and, and how he said that church is whack and, 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 and all of these things. But, but uh, uh, just like many of us, we don't fully investigate the whole story. While I, I, I understood what he said, I think it was irresponsible to say it on that platform. But what I, as I listened to the whole 45 minutes or so of the entire interview, he kind of gave a little bit more context at the end. And he talked about how what we have made the church is whack, how, how we've used the church as a business is whack, how we've mishandled the thing that God has given us is whack. So the institution, he called it the institution is whack. But I like to tell people this way. There's a difference between the organism and the organization. And we got to stop being loyal to the organization and get back to being loyal to the organism because an organism grows from the inside out. An organization grows from the outside. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. From the outside in. And men, if truth be told, and if we were judgment day honest on this good old Sunday morning, we would realize that the organization is the thing that has caused a lot of church hurt, but the organism is the same thing that has helped us heal from the church hurt. Tell somebody scars. I'm scarred for life. He, he says, likewise, a Levite also, when he came to the place and saw him, he passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, someone who's doing the best they can, someone who's not religious in their own right, someone who don't look like you and talk like you and walk the walk like you and come from the same side of the tracks you come from. A Samaritan man. He saw this, this man that had been beaten and left for dead. This man that had just undergone a traumatic experience, one that he would never forget. Because you know, like, if you know, like I know, you realize and recognize that when uh, trauma happens, sometimes we lose sleep at night. When Trump, when a traumatic event, they call it a TE, a traumatic event occurs, uh, sometimes we feel isolated. Yeah. When a TE occurs, sometimes we start blaming ourselves because we, 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 we say, well, we shouldn't have been there in that moment. What, well, what if I had have made a different decision that day or had gone a, a different way? I wouldn't have been involved in the car accident. What if, what if, what if, what if? But even in my what ifs, I know what is. And in my what ifs, I know who is. Even in my what ifs, I know who I am in Christ Jesus. And he's covered me, he's kept me, and he's turned my scars into my testimony. Amen. Amen. Our scars represents healing. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It represents something that could have killed me. Yeah. That if we want the promise, there's going to be some pain attached. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. How can we... Be partakers of the promise when the promise maker and the promise keeper endured pain. Y'all all all right? Okay. Um, Jesus was not accepted. Jesus was not liked. So, so why do we get so discombobulated, disoriented, and surprised and shocked when somebody don't like us? He said, love your neighbor as yourself. So, Marcus, what I, what I realize is to embrace my scars... I have to first learn to love myself. Yeah. Did you hear what I just said? He, yeah. Jesus says, love your neighbor yeah. as you love yourself. Yeah. And so we want people to love us and uh, people to think that we are perfect instead of embracing our imperfections, our flaws and all. Tap somebody say flaws and all. Okay, they didn't hear you. Tap somebody else and say flaws and all. 
Can you high five the person behind you and say flaws and all? I, 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 we got to begin to love ourselves first. And then we can learn to love our neighbors as we love ourselves. Because when we don't love ourselves, we can pass by somebody on the road and just keep passing by on the other side because I don't even love myself. I don't even love myself enough to pick myself up after I've been beaten, bruised, misused, and accused. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me. You, I don't even pick myself up. You think I'm going to do it for somebody else? If you're happier, you know it, tell your face. <laughs> If, if I don't pick myself up, dust myself off, look in the mirror and say, come hell or high water, I'm still here. Come, 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 come what may, God is still blessing me. Somebody asked me last night, man, how are you doing? We, we haven't seen you. You know, we hadn't talked in a while. I said, man, it ain't perfect, but I'm blessed. Because if I don't cheer myself on, who will? Tap somebody say scars. The things that we're trying to put blemish cream on. Yeah, I know about blemish cream. <laughs> I ain't telling that story. But wrong church, wrong church. Uh, but the things we're trying to put blemish cream on. Can I tell you a secret? Just apply the blood. The blood of Jesus will make everything blend in. Amen. Because I remember reading that love covers a multitude of sins. That means a multitude, a multiplicity. Uh, what we, okay, I can't say that here. Uh, 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 a bag of Skittles full of, 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 of sin. If, if I can tell it plainly, oftentimes some of our scars have come from things that we've done that we weren't supposed to do. Amen. Now you telling on yourself, I ain't say that. I ain't say majority, you know. Some, 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 some of y'all just don't know how to handle folk. But, 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 but some of the things that have happened to us have been because of our disobedience to God. And so when I look at some of the scars that I even have, it was because, watch me, I was disobedient to my parents. Some of the things that happened to me as a child that I'm still carrying to, y'all better come get me right through here, that I'm still carrying today is because I didn't listen to somebody who had gone before me, who knew a little something about living life down here. I came today to tell you that if I don't listen to somebody who has come before me, who knows a little something about life down here below, then I'm going to have bumps and scratches and bruises and cuts and stab wounds and gunshot. Well, I'm going to have some stuff that is going to happen to me. So, because I didn't listen to someone who had gone before me. My mom told me, don't play on, on the bike. As you're coming down the hill. Yeah. <laughs> Just ride the bike. How was it was intended to be rode. <laughs> intended yeah. to be rode. Yeah. But I didn't listen. Well, well. Mama told me don't go around the stove. Because it's hot. Well, do you mean hot as in like good or do you mean hot as in like temperature hot? Like what kind of hot are you really talking about? Because if, 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 if you, if you know, you kind of being hip mama, you know, hot means something good. I, mean, I found out she meant temperature hot. And I still got the scar under my chin to prove it. Praise Jesus. You know, y'all remember the old copper pots? 
Like if, if you if, if 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 you don't know what a copper pot is, yeah. we 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 ain't the same. Um, you know the, the old copper pots with the with the handle. You know, uh, the one you had to use a pot holder to pick up. Yeah. Amen. See, they got all this ceramic stuff now where you can actually now no, you had to use a, a pot holder. Yeah. Um, well, I was you know a little young young lad, so I couldn't really look and see what Mama was cooking. So I decided to climb up on something. To, and my chin was on the same plane of the handle of the copper pot. See, I was on the level of my disobedience. See, y'all thought I was talking about a copper pot. I, 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 was, I, was, I was eye level with disobedience. And because I was looking at my disobedience in the face, it had to teach me a lesson. And I got the score as a receipt to know that next time, if I go to the stove, if I go to the pot, I got to come prepared. <laughs> Tell somebody my scars are my receipts. He says that when he saw the man, I'm in the text, a Samaritan man who was on a journey came upon him. And when he saw him, he felt compassion. When he saw him, he felt compassion. And he came to him and bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. Now, the Samaritan man, who's not really the one in the story we would have identified with, the one who would be willing to give of his own, was the one who were, was moved with compassion. What I need to tell you, beloved, is compassion ought to move you to do things different. Did you hear what I just said? Compassion ought to make you move differently. Meaning it's something I normally would not do. I normally would not consider doing this. I, I, I have the, the oil and the wine for myself. As I'm moving about my day and minding my business and drinking my water so that my skin can say, you, 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 know, you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 so my scars can be hydrated, praise Jesus. I, 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 I normally wouldn't do this. But compassion makes me move differently because compassion is what Jesus had on us. Compassion made Jesus move differently. Okay, I'm about to stretch your theology. Compassion made Jesus move differently because Jesus didn't want to go to the cross. Well, I don't know about that one, preacher. Do you remember when Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane and his humanity stepped in? His deity took a back seat for a moment and, and, and his humanity stepped in and, and he, he cried to his father. He was praying as, as drops and he was crying and, and, as drops of blood and, and, and he, he cried out to his father, if it be thy will, let this cup, I'm almost through, pass from me. Let this cup pass from me. I, I don't want to do this, but I moved with compassion. And, 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 and as we look at Jesus' language here, let this cup pass from me. Oh, I wish I had time to deal with this. When, when I look at the cup, and you look at the Seder, the, the Passover meal, the, the type of meal that, that, that they observed over the Passover. On the table, we, we, we look at the, the cup of the blood, that, uh, of the, the fruit of the vine that represents the blood of Christ. But when you really understand and do a contextual backdrop of, of the Seder and the Passover meal, you will realize that every Passover meal, there were three cups on the table. There were three cups. And the three cups represents, well, one represents the pain and the suffering. The other, well, let me, let me, let me, just, let me just jump forward. 
the G, when Jesus says, I will not drink of this cup anew with you until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. I will not drink of this cup again with you until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Matthew chapter 26 and verse uh, number 30 or so, right in there, right about in there. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Y'all heard that before. He says, when I'm, uh, I will not drink of this cup, thank you, 26 to 30. I will not drink of this cup again until I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. Jesus is talking about the third cup is still on the table. And that one day when I return, I'm going to be able to drink Drink that cup with you. I came to tell you that compassion caused Jesus to leave some on the table when he cried and it's finished. He said, I'm done down here, but there's still one more thing that I'm going to do. I'm not in control of this one. My father is. I'm not in control of going to the cross. My, my father is. What am I trying to tell you? You might not be in control of your situation, but you are in control of how you continue to live inside of your story. Amen. Jesus says, I know you're hurting. Yeah. I know you've been beaten. I know you've been bruised. I know that nobody cares. If we're going to be honest, people have left you yeah. more than they've joined you. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anybody else who has a track record of more people leaving? Than coming? He says, well, I'm leaving too. But I won't be gone for long. And he's saying, along the way, I want you to embrace the scarring. Because I, I got to go away to attend to some more business. He says, I, I'm going to prepare a place for you. And when I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself that there where I am, there you may be also. He says, if it were not so, I would have told you. He, he, he says, I'm coming back. I, I, I'm going a, away for a little while, but I, I will be back. And, and when I come back, whatever is left on the table, we are going to enjoy it together. What I came today to tell you is that just keep Keep going. Just keep pushing. Cause just keep looking at your scars and realize that God's grace is sufficient for you. I got to leave you now, but my scars are an indication that the attack of the adversary against me failed. Did you hear what I just said? The attack that was against me failed because I realized that the enemy comes to kill, to steal, and to destroy, but he failed. Somebody say he failed. High five somebody say he failed. Uh, heals, he got heals the brokenhearted and he bandages up our wounds. Our scars reveal to us, y'all watch me, our scars reveal to us that we are stronger than the thing that hurt us. Amen. That's the last thing I got my lead with. Your, your, your scars reveals that we are stronger than the thing that hurt us. Because, because over time, somebody say over time, over time I healed. And even though I have a scar, it doesn't hurt like it did then. Jesus says, I am going to come back. As you see in the text, he says, I'm in verse 35, verse 34. And he came and he bandaged up his wounds, pouring oil and wine on them. And he put him on his own animal and brought him to an end and took care of him. While he was with them, he took care of them. While he was with them, he took care of him. He he bound up his wounds. He he had poured, he poured oil and he had, oh God I I I I gotta stop. But 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 he he poured oil and wine on this man. He he says, listen, the others left you for dead, but I'm going to give you an anointing that is going to be different from anything that you've ever experienced. I gotta tell you, beloved, that your scars just was an invitation for the oil to fall on top of you. I I, I need you to understand that that that. that that this oil and this wine that he poured on this man was to cover his wounds. Yeah. 
and to care for his person. Yes. He didn't just pour it and keep going. He stayed with them a little while. Yeah. Yeah. And the last thing I need you to see in this text is that you have to find somebody. You got to find somebody who will stay with you long enough to start the healing process. You got to find that one person. You got to find somebody that you can trust, that you can depend on, that, that would come what may. These scars, are these, these wounds are, are fresh. These wounds are open, but I need to heal. I got to heal. I can't stay here like this. Yeah. So this man that came on a journey was passing by, and he saw this man was moved with compassion, and he says, I'm not going to leave you broken. Y'all come here, church. We got to stop leaving people broken. Amen. 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 Once you heal, help somebody else heal. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's your word. Once, once you find grace, bring somebody else to grace. We come in the church doors week in and week out empty handed. By ourselves. Realizing that if you saw somebody that was that was on the I, I preached a few weeks ago a sermon entitled I'm Bleeding Out. And I talked about carrying a tourniquet with you. If if you don't have anybody around you to render proper aid, you just you better tie that thing off until the Holy Spirit can come and, and, and put some put somebody in your life to help you stop the bleeding. Because some of us are bleeding out. But if you came up on somebody who was bleeding out, wouldn't you take them to the hospital? Well, y'all come here. Wouldn't you bring them to the hospital? Y'all lean in. Well, I see people bleeding out every day. But we won't bring them to the Lord. Bring them. Listen, listen, listen. I need y'all to hear what I'm saying. Uh, uh, hold your amens just, just to hear me. Stop bringing people to church. And start bringing people to the Lord. Because we're bringing people to the organization where there is no healing, where there is no help. This only, it's, more like, it's only compounded trauma and, and compounded interest on, on top of because everybody wants to be on a platform and everybody wants to be an influencer and everybody wants a microphone, but they don't want no towels to serve nobody. I came to decree and to declare that if you going to keep bringing people to church, then you need to find some help for yourself. Start bringing people to the Lord. Stop bringing people to the organization. Start people bringing people to the organism. Tell somebody, I know a man who was on his way down to Jerusalem. And he fell amongst thieves. Judas betrayed him for 30 pieces of silver. Y'all thought I was still talking about, you thought I was still talking about the Samaritan. No, I'm talking about Jesus and him crucified. He fell amongst thieves. That was at the table, at his own table. Yeah, yeah. Can I tell you? You need a Judas in your life. Come on, come on. I, I'm trying to quit, Doc. You, 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 you need a Judas in your life. You, you can't get to your next level until you've met your Judas. We got to get to the place to where we're able to embrace things. Because Paul said it this, this way, these are but light afflictions. That if I stand the test of time, God will redeem my time. God will not waste your scars. And the beautiful thing about it is he says, when he, gonna, he, he, said, he told the innkeeper, take care of him. And whatever you spend more, when I return, I will repay you. That's the message to the church. Jesus is telling us, 
to take care of one another until Jesus come home. Take care of one another until Jesus returns. And Jesus said, whatever you spit, whatever you spit, trying to take care of somebody else, whatever you invested in other people, whatever you poured out of yourself, the, the oil and the wine that you had stored up for yourself, Jesus says, lay up treasures uh, uh, up in heaven where, where not the rust of corrupt and, and where thieves cannot break through and steal. I'm trying to take you to a place where the robbers can't touch you, where the critics can't criticize you, where the people can't abandon you, where the judges can't judge you. I came to tell you, Jesus is saying, when I come back, <sighs> I'm going to give you, I'm going to give it back to you, everything that you spent. Can you tell somebody, say, I'm scarred for life? But it's okay. Because I'm his for life. And not just in this life, but in the life to come. I don't know who needed to hear this word on this morning, but I pray that not only your ears were open, but your heart was too. Because if you know, like I know, the scars that we have today aren't going to be the only scars that we have the rest of our life. What I want to condition your heart this morning, preferably, beloved, is to know that when the scars come, there is a healing agent known as love. His name is Emmanuel, God among us. And he's saying, take care of each other like good siblings ought to do. Amen. And if you take care of each other, my father will take care of you. The healing is in the grace. And if you haven't experienced true grace, you need to step on into the Lord. As I tell people all the time, try Jesus. If you've tried everything else, you try therapy. You've tried self-help books. You've, caught, you've taught that I want to fix my life. Oprah and lost her mind, so y'all had to find somebody else to talk to. If you, tried, if you tried everything else, some of you tried weed, amen. Oh, okay, say weed in church. I'm sorry. I thought this was a hospital. Yeah, some, some of you tried weed and, 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 and pills and, and, and other things. Like, say amen, say amen. You, you, you tried people. Try Jesus. And if you don't like him, the devil will take you back. <laughs> try, try Jesus. If you don't like him, you know, 10 out of 10, I recommend. But if you don't like him, the devil will take you back. Come to Jesus this morning. You need to hear that Jesus humbled and died on carry for your sins and mine. You need to hear that he died and rose again the third day. He died, was buried, and rose again the third day. Believe that. Repent of your sins. Confess Christ to be the Son of God, the sweetest name to ever be uttered on mortal tongue, that he is the Christ, the Son of the living God. Be buried with him in baptism for the remission of your sins. Rise and walk in newness of life. One day, he says, I will repay you. I will repay you for everything that you've gone through. Will you come to Jesus? If you have a, a prayer request, if you have a need of the church, if you've fallen away from your first love, I want you to come back. Through repentance, confession, and prayer, God will bring you back and remember your sin no more. Be coming to him.